developing the acceptance and the use scheme uh, to deal with gifts of works of art uh, from people in their lifetime so they can get a tax benefit um, from giving a work of art to a cultural organisation, um, which is never been possible for a big thing. It's the first time in the UK that we have um, made a step towards lifetime giving. Um, it's worth an additional £10 million a year in terms of <coughs> Refund, so it's not an absolutely huge amount in the context of some of these great works of art, but it's a very, very significant step in terms of the giving agenda because we've never had um, incentives towards lifetime giving to the arts before, so um, hopefully that will help. Um, I have here um, my top official uh, weapons, Frank for Keith Pickle, um, and he has been working very closely with the Arts Council and the Heritage Lottery Fund, uh, and between us, we've put together a hundred million pound. Uh, Catalyst fund to stimulate philanthropy, and that is a combination of schemes for smaller cultural organisations to help them develop fundraising capacity. And I've done a huge amount of fundraising before, and a match funding scheme for larger cultural organisations who want to build up endowments. And I think endowments uh, is a big next step for us in the UK. Um, I think we have to be very realistic. Interest rates are extremely low, so. Uh, and endowment in the strict sense of the word isn't going to generate an enormous amount in terms of investment income right now. But when I talk about endowment, I'm really talking about uh, long-term fundraising, um, fundraising for uh, the future, not for your immediate needs in, in the years coming up. And I think if we can start building up these um, large endowments that they have in America, uh, that is something that uh, is a big opportunity. Um, the example I always give is, is the Met in New York, which has been down to $1.9 billion. It took them over 100 years to build up. Um, I think we need to start our 100 years now, which I won't be around to receive any congratulations for doing so, but I still think it's a very, very important next step. Um, and um, so, anyway, we have a range of measures, but I think um, what William has brought everyone together to think about this evening is, in a way, one of the most exciting things which is um, the potential for digital fundraising. Now, I don't want to talk about the specific things, which I think William's team has done a huge amount of work on. I, you know, I entirely agree with him about the exciting potential of tax giving, of small donations, all those kinds of things. But I just want to tell you what I think the two big trends are in the technology <coughs> industry, which will shape the way our use of technology emerges. And the first is, um, very loosely what I call the need for speed. Um, we are at the moment in a first generation broadband world. Um, we are on the cusp of moving to the next generation of broadband. The average speed in the UK at the moment is about six and a half meg. Um, if you have a fiber connection to your home, you can get a speed of more like 100 meg. And we are on the cusp of that revolution. And I have rather foolishly um, announced an objective, which wasn't even in our manifesto, so I didn't have to, but I was going to try and get 90% of the UK connected to super fast broadband by 2015. So it's not as far away as all of that. Um, I don't think all that definition of super fast, I better call it uh, very quickly indeed, because we've got a camera there, um, but that definition of super fast isn't 100 meg. I think uh, we're talking about getting uh, upwards of 20 meg, but that is still very, very big change from where we are now. Uh, think of it as um, unlimited video um, of TV quality picture. <coughs> um, think of absolutely no capacity constraints on speed. And um, as we move into that world, and the Chancellor's announcement today was an extra 100 million to make the UK uh, the first country in Europe to have 10 100 million cities. So we will hope to have 10 cities where Everyone in the city is able to access speeds of 100 meg. Um, I think all I really want to say about that is it's in, utterly impossible to predict the, the number, scale, and the type of new businesses that are going to emerge on the back of those much faster speeds. But it is utterly mad to think that we won't get a huge new generation of businesses. Uh, no one predicted when, um, when we moved from uh, dial up broadband, that it would transform the grocery sector. 
But as soon as broadband penetration reached uh, beyond 50%, we started seeing Tesco.com, Ocado, all the supermarkets moving to online shopping, which has been completely transformational for groups of society that never thought they'd be touched by the digital revolution. For example, uh, disabled people, older people living in remote places for whom the weekly supermarket shop is a tremendous physical chore. Those people have had their lives transformed. The grocery sector has been transformed by that. I think we're looking at um, widespread use of telemedicine, people consulting their doctors, GPs online, um, of home education in Korea, where they have a lot. They have the best super fast broadband in the world. There's a huge home education sector where um, children come home and get taught uh, in groups of three or four <coughs> by a tutor all the students and the tutors all in different locations. Um, but I'm absolutely sure in terms of the engagement that you have with people who go to cultural organisations, it will transform what is possible. Um, people are able to look at concerts and events remotely, live. Um, the people that you're able to interact with um, over huge geographical distances. I don't want to predict what it is, but I think it is going to be an absolutely huge revolution. And I don't think the penny has really started to drop. Um, but you know, I am determined that we move into a world of unlimited speed because I think it's absolutely uh, it's a huge opportunity for the UK uh, as we are the second biggest creative digital content in the world after America.